What caused me to start Wyoming Disabled Hunters is um, I had an accident, a uh, vehicle accident in 2001. Um, avid hunter before, um, loved hunting, things like that. Um, and after my accident, and I had a male nurse approach me, and uh, we, I was in ICU laying there, and um, this guy asked me what I liked to used to do, or what I used to do. And so I told him I was a hunter and fisherman and things like that. And he told me, he said, well, you better get used to tying um, fishing flies because that's all you're going to be able to do the rest of your life and it really pissed me off so what it did is it, it but it inspired me at the same time in a way after I got mad enough um, but that helped me to I'm going to show this guy and I'm going to show everybody out there that we're going to do it exactly we're going to do it um, just like an able-bodied person can do we just got to do it a little differently and still continue to do it so then a few years down the road after my accident um, a gentleman approached me um, wanting to kind of, he's done some hunts in this area for handicapped people, want us to, to form an organization around here. So we started just throwing some ideas around, things like that. And then in 2008, uh, we just, a couple of us got together, made a makeshift board meeting and, and formed Wyoming Disabled Hunters, and it's kind of taken off from there. Um, the main goal was wanting to be able to get people that either were hunting before um, or had never hunted to give them an opportunity to get back into the field or to try something they've never done and, and to show them that disability doesn't limit them um, from doing the things they used to love or doing the things they love to do. So, and that's been one of the things we look, look forward to getting people set up with. So. Well, even though him and I just met last night, we've already kind of made plans in the next couple of years to meet up and hunt out here together and then hunt back in uh, around Mich Michigan up Peninsula area, coyote hunt and do some bear hunting hopefully and the deer hunting's not what it is here. So. Uh, I have what I have to offer. <laughs> I mean, you, you meet people like this on occasions like this, and you kind of stay in touch. Uh, you make you make friends. You know, it's not like you're just doing this to, you know, do it. I guess you got to kind of have a purpose. Uh, you want to do it. Um, meet people, and then, like you said, he's gonna, we can try to go out to Michigan and do do some hog hunting or something like that. You know, and this is my first time as a companion hunter, as far as with Wyoming disabled hunters. Um, so it's a good experience. I, I'm really enjoying myself. It's a great time, um, great hospitality. Well, I tell you, these cowboys out here, them and their, their lift trucks, and people, guys in wheelchairs trying to get into them. I wheeled out this morning to get in this truck, and you're joking, right? <laughs> we had a little the hard time. We got in there. We got in there, you know, and he, uh, he had helped lift a little bit, and he's got a bum leg as well right now, so we're the, the blind leading the blind basically right now. But, no, he's been... Had lots of good conversations in the blind and all, all night last night. It was fun. You know, it's going to be a great friendship, I think. And like I said, this is amazing to have Wyoming Disabled Hunter set everything up like this and give us such great people to work with. When I got the opportunity to take Carrie, I wouldn't back down at all. I mean, I said, I told my kids that I wouldn't be going deer hunting this year because I was taking Carrie hunting. He wanted an opportunity to get an elk and He's from Fargo, North Dakota, and I wasn't going to turn him away. I mean, I had the gun and everything to use, and I had the setup. And Immediately when a person meets an, your companion guide, you have something in common, like I said, the hunting. Everybody's into that. You know, you know where he's coming from, and he knows where you're coming from. That's the camaraderie you get in the sport. Um, and we hit it off right out the bat, I think. Went to the slope, and I was kind of amazed how long the drive was and the popping of the ears, that kind of thing. I knew I was going in the rocky country because you could feel through the tires. When we got to the blind itself, and I um, went into the blind. It was a very nice blind. Got settled in. Everybody started uh, getting set up and sat there and didn't see a bird for about five hours. Nothing. I mean, no movement at all. And so we just start chit-chatting back and forth. I was just telling them a story that the Indians got them wapiti because they're a very elusive animal. And all of a sudden, just out of the corner of my eye, there's this elk standing there, 100 yards from the timber line. I should have seen her three minutes before that, but she just clear out there. Then he, um, he starts shaking. I'm, figuring, I'm trying to figure out why he's shaking because he's grabbing at my shoulders, the gun, everything, and I'm going, what's going on? 
So I thought he was kidding to begin with, and then things got a little bit more serious and I could figure it out. <laughs> and um, so then we chose, with this elk about 20 yards away looking at us, uh, we trying to open this window without spooking it, and you can imagine what that's like. <laughs> she just come running right up to the window. She's like 20 yards away, and I'm trying to open this window. My hands start shaking. I'm getting all excited because she's sitting there looking at me, and I'm just wondering if I'm, we're going to get this opportunity or if they're going to run into the trees. And she kind of ran off to the side, and then there's a second elk that come in behind her, and she's about 46 yards away. I put my ear protection in, and, and Vince, he's whispering lefts, rights, ups, downs, so I can sight in. He's looking through the pistol scope. We, we don't have laser scope or nothing. And so he's not touching the rifle at all. He's just telling me lefts and rights. I'm trying to listen to him through my hearing protection. And um, he actually tells me to fire. I think he's telling me right. So I turn the gun right, of course. Glad he didn't pull the trigger because we would have been chasing that one for a while. But we got all our stuff cooled down and I was shaking so bad. He said I was shaking the whole blind. I was a little overexcited. So we line up again, and then this time I understand his fire. And I fire, and I get a uh, lung shot. He made an excellent shot. He hit her right in the lungs, and she only went about 60 yards. She was down. I was able to get out and track it through the snow on the elbow of my guide, and um, went down to a draw, kind of a shallow draw, about. 60 yards. So I reach down and here it's just huge. I feel the head and it feels like a horse head. And the fur feels puffed up, not, not at all like a horse. You know, I was looking for a mane, there was no mane. Whatever your disability is and whether or not it's getting worse or better or whatever, um, as long as you take your time and you develop the technique and the technique works for you specifically, it doesn't have to work for everybody. There's not a universal technique with this stuff because wild game is unpredictable and, and you have to accept that sometimes, hey, it ain't your disability. It's the animal, it's the weather, it's whatever, you know. So you just have to realize that, yes, it's not shopping, it's hunting. And um, you have to be there for the whole hunting experience, not just, I'm out there to kill an animal. Because I, I was out there with the elk, and I was listening while they were getting the truck and stuff. I was standing there, and everything was quiet. I could hear coyotes to my right, yipping. And way off to the left, in the, in the, and it was echoing off the cliffs, was a wolf. And it was kind of interesting to hear that. And that's actually part of the nature and also part of the hunt, too.